Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Jagain Sundar, and welcome to the second live talk of this afternoon. This one is about live backup. And as the name implies, this is backing up a VM while it's running, uh, creating incremental and full backups of VMs. This is uh, somewhat orthogonal and somewhat related to some of the block migration and streaming stuff that uh, uh, Marcelo talked about at the last presentation. But my approach is different, and it's focused on, I think, a different use case. Um, I call this a complete backup solution for making full and incremental backups of running VMs. And complete by that, I mean there is a client that can make the backup and write it out to uh, one of two things. It can either create files that you can put on tape, or it can keep a consistent backup image on another server so you can start up the VM should the first one fail. This is designed for use by system administrators, backup software, or other automation mechanisms, more for a cloud model and less for a desktop type usage. So when I talk about snapshots, it's going to be different from snapshots as used in other cases. Um, the snapshot I'm talking about is a very short-lived snapshot that lives just during the backup process. And it's really not meant for things like people using their desktop VM making a snapshot, installing a patch, and figuring out if it worked or not. This is not that use case at all. Here's a pictorial representation of live backup. There's the VM, there's QEMU, and live backup has a piece, an enhancement to QEMU. Uh, let's take two disk images, VDisk 0 and 1. There's a live backup client which will connect using a TCP connection today. Uh, to the live backup piece of QEMU and copy over dirty blocks. It will then write those out to keep consistent images on the backup host, or it can just produce incremental backup files that you can write to tape, then extract from tape, and apply to a base image to, uh, to get a backup of a specific date or something of that sort. So design principles. I consider this to be designed for cloud operator requirements and not so much for desktop use or for even enterprise use. There is a requirement that there should be a minimal impact on the runtime performance of the VM. Uh, this is going to come again and again in my presentation. Um, if there's a question of shall we impact the VM at the cost of more robust backups, the answer that I've usually chosen is, no, the VM should continue running. It should not be impacted in any way. We'll drop the backup if that's what it takes. Under failure circumstances, I want the VM to be as close to operating as if there were no backup. The snapshot should be entirely optional. If something goes wrong, you drop the snapshot, lose the backup, but the VM should be intact. That's the goal. There should be no extra disk requirements. One of the things that is um, less well known about snapshots in other mechanisms is that if you have a terabyte big file system and you create a long-lived snapshot, there is a potential for that snapshot file to also grow to a terabyte, which means if you're a cloud operator, you've got you know, eight VMs of one terabyte each, and you're making a snapshot of all of those eight VMs, and you want those to run 24-7, essentially you've got to provision twice the amount of space. I feel that that's an onerous requirement, and such requirements will not make for uh, a useful solution. So what does the solution consist of? It consists of some functional improvements or enhancements to the QEMU block layer. It tracks dirty blocks in a memory bitmap. This bitmap persists across reboots by writing it out to a file and then reading it in when the VM is restarted. But during the operation of the VM, it's never written to disk. It's just an in-memory structure. And that goes back to saying, if something happens and we lose that in-memory structure, fine. The VM is not impacted. 
So there's a custom network protocol. This is something I did out of convenience to make this whole thing work and prove that this is a possible solution. I considered things like NBD and iSCSI and they were just too complex for my requirements. There's also a, a movement underway to enhance LibWord to provide some of this functionality in LibWord in a cross-solution manner. So there is a possibility that this custom network protocol may go away sometime in the future, but uh, the client will just implement the new way of getting the blocks out. There's a snapshot mechanism to maintain a snapshot while the backup client transfers the disk blocks over. This is different from other snapshot mechanisms that require you to keep the snapshot active all the time or even chains of snapshots active all the time. The live backup solution creates a snapshot when the client comes in and says, I want to stay, start a backup now. It deletes the backup, it deletes the snapshot when the backup client is done transferring all the blocks it needs over to the other host. There's also a new program called Live Backup Client that's used to transfer dirty blocks from QMU to the other, uh, other host. So characteristics of this solution. Most of the time, all that's happening is when the VM wants to write a block, a bit in this memory bitmap is set, saying that this block is dirty. It actually works in clusters of 4K blocks, um, clusters of size 4K, but in effect, it's just a memory operation. That's what will happen 23 hours and 30 minutes of the day. The 30 minutes during which a live backup client connects and transfers blocks over, things get a little messier, as with all uh, copy on write and, and block snapshot based solutions. But the point is that most of the time, the VM will be operating as if there's no snapshot, as if there is no overhead at all. So when the backup client connects to live backup piece in QEMU and says, create a snapshot because it wants to create a consistent view of the disks, the, uh, the, the in-memory bitmap is moved to a separate snapshot structure and some processing happens on that. At this time, when the backup is active, if the VM starts to write to the disk, then there is a copy on write process where we save the block that's going to be overwritten into a cow file. That's the only time when the performance of the virtual machine is impacted. Sorry. Is it okay? Sure, absolutely. Um, why, did, if you keep the bitmap in memory, what happens if the uh, guest goes down, uh, either uh, right. organized shutdown or a sudden? So organized shutdown is, is, is a good case. At the end of all disk I.O., this bitmap is written out to a file, and the file indicates more than just the bitmap. It indicates that the VM shut down cleanly, all the disks were closed, and the file was flushed. The next time the VM starts up, this bitmap is re read into memory, and it operates as if the shutdown never happened. In the case of a VM crashing, then this file is not written out. What this means is that the next backup that the backup client wants to start has got to be a full backup. There is no other impact on the virtual machine. The underlying file is not impacted. There's no snapshot file that needs to be merged. The VM itself is completely unimpacted. The only thing that is impacted is if you have a backup client that says, I want to take incremental backup number Wednesday of seven, right? And we don't know at this point what changed between Tuesday and Wednesday. So we go back and tell it, we don't know. You need to do a full backup. At that point, it needs to do a full backup. There is no more possibility of doing incremental backup. That is the only impact on the virtual machine. So I want to uh, walk through an example here of uh, what I consider a practical use case of MySQL running in a virtual machine with some web serving, something or the other, and all that is required to make application consistent backup of this virtual machine. There are a few things uh, that Dor uh, referred to in, in the previous talk. Uh, there are application mechanisms in other operating systems like Windows, which are useful for this. It's a standard way of doing it. But in our case, I'm just going to do, you know, they all have passwordless SSH. Let's see how this whole thing works out and go from there. 
So first I would want to SSH into the guest OS and say flush tables with read lock. Essentially what that does is it tells MySQL to flush all the data that it has cached in its buffers. I mean it can malloc a bunch of memory and store cached data in there, which is how MySQL runs fast. You want that into disk. So by doing this, you push that data out into disk. Then I run sync on the guest OS to get that out actually into the host. Um, it's true that there are better mechanisms of doing that. Uh, there's a file system quiz that's often talked about and there's file system freeze, both of which are better alternatives to this. But I'm an old time Unix hand and sync was the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> so anyway, there are better mechanisms to do the sync part of it, but uh, just take this leap of faith with me, it works. Connect to QEMU live backup and run the command create snapshot. Now, the in-memory bitmap is moved into a new snapshot structure and some other processing happens which I'll go into a little bit later. Now connect back SSH into the guest OS and say unlock tables. At this point, MySQL can start writing again. It's not in read-only mode. So this period of time is very brief. That's something I'd like to emphasize. The process of snapshotting is a very quick process, and that's the only time when MySQL may be in read-only mode. Connect to QEMU live backup, and then start sucking over all the dirty blocks. After all the dirty blocks have been copied over, you connect back to the QEMU live backup and say, destroy snapshot. Destroying snapshot does not require any merging of blocks or anything of that sort. All it means is, if there's a copy on write file that was created because the VM wanted to make some writes in the same locations that we were trying to copy over, that file is deleted. The memory, in memory, dirty bitmap is deleted and a new one which has been running is now the only in memory bitmap. So I tried to put together a timeline of operations. Um, I, I hope this is, understandable, so the live backup client is the one that initiates all of these things. Nothing is done by QEMU or the guest. It's all initiated by the backup client. The advantage to this is that suppose for some reason, and I'll tell you why, the backup snapshot was not able to be created, then the backup client can go off and say, okay, that VM is busy, I'll make a backup of the next VM running on that host and I'll come back and try this later on. This is a very low cost way of backing up VMs and ensuring that you can provide virtual machines that have backups for literally no cost over just local disk based virtual machines. So uh, the live backup client connects to SSHs into the guest and runs MySQL flush tables with read lock. That's here. Then it runs the OS sync, comes back into live backup client. Then it connects to and it connects at this point to the QEMU running on the host. Remember that the QEMU socket that we're listening for commands is actually on the VM host and not in the guest. And it calls the create snap command. Uh, some of these things are going to be replaced by monitor commands and libvirt enhancements, but for now this is how things work. Once the create snap succeeds, remember the create snap operation is very quick. We just make another in-memory bitmap and we initiate a curl file. We don't write anything to it, so it's virtually instantaneous. It comes back here. Now, this is the time during which, okay, now we go back to the, the guest OS and MySQL unlock tables. So the duration during which MySQL is in read-only mode is from here till here, which is very short. Once we come back from MySQL unlock tables, we connect back to QEMU with live backup and we start transferring over the dirty blocks. We know which blocks are dirty because in the snapshot structure on QEMU with live backup, we have a memory, uh, a piece of memory with bits set for, for the right clusters. Once the transfer of all the blocks is done, we connect back to QEMU live backup and say destroy snapshot. This is again a very quick operation. It's just deleting a file and uh, 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 freeing a piece of malloc memory. We get, uh, get backup to live backup client and that's the entire uh, process of backup. Um, so I will be honest, during this period of transferring live uh, backup or, or more accurately, 
the time during which the snap is active, during that period, if the virtual machine wants to write a block, and that block happens to be one of the ones that's in our dirty bitmap, that's marked as something that needs to be backed up, we can't allow the VM to proceed. Because if it were to overwrite that block, our backup would not be consistent. So what we have to do at that point is to read that dirty block out of the underlying file, save it in a copy on write file. Only when that save is complete, we allow the VM's write to proceed. This will cause the virtual machine to possibly run slower if the same blocks are overwritten for that period of time. Um, but once again, I will emphasize that that period of time is really short. If you're running a daily backup, perhaps a Sunday full backup with six days of incremental backups, this should not take more than 20 minutes out of a 24-hour day. And the way I see this being used is a cloud operator may offer three levels of service. You can say local disk-based virtual machine. If the disk dies, you're out of luck. The second and more expensive way of doing things is a NAS or another st shared storage or some synchronized mechanism-based VMs. Think EC2 elastic block storage. In that case, there is a backup of that particular disk somewhere else. It's using a network protocol to synchronize. There's a cost penalty that you have to pay. A third level of service that lies between these two could be offered, which is will give you a VM that's backed up every day, and you, the, the most amount of data that you may lose is one day's worth of data, or six hours, or 12 hours. Pick, pick a frequency that works for this. This is almost zero cost from a cloud operator's point of view, and it offers vastly more functionality, and I believe that for a market like EC2, more than 50% of users will be happy with this sort of a solution and may not go to the EBS type solution. So that is exactly where the solution is targeted. OK, some, some more details about how live backup works in, 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 uh, um, in steps. Um, so the, the blue box is the, the virtual disk file. So one of the things I, 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 I'm not, so my preferred way of running VMs is either with LVM volumes as the backing file or with a full pre-allocated file in ext4, preferably, or sometimes ext3. Because um, that's the guest operating system with ext3 or 4. Then there's qemu with its file formats, qcow or qcow2 or whatnot. Then there's the host operating system with ext3 or 4. And in the qemu layer, you may have two or four snapshots or whatever number of snapshots. I believe that it's really hard to model the performance and offer predictable latency VMs if you have this many layers of software that really don't talk to each other. So my preference is to say, at the host level, do an LVM volume or do a fully pre-allocated file, not even sparse allocated. I like to touch every block so that the whole thing is fully allocated. One level about that, QEMU does nothing, meaning it, it basically is passed through. At the guest level, it does ext4 or ext3 or MySQL may do direct IO or whatever. The application actually is knowledgeable and is trying to do something intelligent there. With that sort of a layout, I believe you can get a very scalable, you know, tens of thousands of virtual machines running on thousands of hosts with predictable performance and not uh, um, uh, nothing, no surprises, if you will. Um, as, as, as an anecdote, I'd like to mention that in the last year and a half that Amazon has moved EC2 to mostly EBS volumes, they've had two catastrophic failures, both related to EBS synchronization. Um, that stuff is really hard to do, and people get very upset and totally worked up about how unreliable it is, but reality is that it's very hard to do at scale. And I believe that eliminating some variables and making them constant makes for a more stable environment. Anyway, I'll get off my soapbox now and move on to the rest of my presentation. Um, so this is during normal operation. That's 23 hours and 30 minutes that I mentioned. VM wants to make a write. All we do is we interpose, we pick up that write. In our bitmap, we set a bit saying this block was dirty and allow the write to proceed. So live backup client calls snapshot. This, 
midnight or later and the client wants to make a backup. It connects to QEMU, calls for a snapshot. We take that in-memory dirty bitmap that we've been writing to for all these 23 hours, move it into a snapshot structure, and we create a, a, a cow file. The cow file is empty at this point. We also have a bitmap. Um, so some of these things, there may be better ways to do it. As I listen to some of the presentations, I realize that other people have faced similar problems and are trying to solve the same things. But uh, I also have a bitmap of blocks that are in this cow file just so I can go back and uh, verify when, when, when I need to write uh, into the cow file or not. So that's the snapshot process. It's very quick. The client now runs backup. And at this point, when it calls backup, we have some logic to determine whether the client's notion of what incremental backup this is and what the, uh, uh, the full backup that's based on, um, if those match between client and server, then we say, yes, you can do an incremental backup. And we start the process of transferring the dirty blocks since the last incremental backup was taken. So this is the uh, ugly details of some, some of the things that need to happen. So VM wants to write. Because remember, we did a very short period of time where we called SQL, MySQL, and told it to keep it in read-only state. We created the snapshot, then said, OK, go ahead and write. But at this time, the backup is not complete. All we know is that we need to make a copy on write of every block that happens to collide. So if the VM wants to write, we look at the block. It has never been written to before. It doesn't, uh, uh, it's not in our dirty blocks bitmap. We let that write go through. We don't care. But suppose there's a collision. We look at it and say, oh, this is in our dirty bit, in our snapshots, dirty blocks bitmap. In other words, the client is going to want to copy this block at some point. Now, we can't allow the VM to overwrite this block that's in the base file. So we read it out, we write it to the copy on write file, we set a bit saying that it's in the copy on write file, and then we allow the client to proceed with its write. So this does slow things down. It's not, it's not unusually slow, or it's not the kind of slow where the VM goes away for two minutes and all manner of uh, things start timing out and dying on you. It's not that kind of slow. It's as if the disk got three times slower suddenly for a short period of time. So that's roughly what live backup is. Um, this is working software. In, uh, later in my presentation, I'll show you what I did to prove to myself that this is indeed working. And, and I have uh, some you know, my welcome feedback on that if you think I'm out of my mind. But here's what it looks like right now. Um, there, the, the, the red lines or the red phrases are the additional parameters that I have uh, built into QEMU. Uh, there's a live backup equals on in the drive parameter list, which tells us that this is a disk we care about. And even though the snapshot may not, um, even though the, the, so essentially, if you have scratch files where the OS writes stuff that you don't care about, if you need to restart it in a backup image, then you won't back up those, those drives. Uh, then there is a live backup directory specification and a port specification. Uh, the directory is used for storing the backup, uh, uh, the, the bitmap file. The in-memory bitmap is written to a specific location and reread in when the VM shuts down and reboots. This directory is used for that. Um, originally, I was just writing it into the same directory where the file is, but that doesn't work for LVM. You really want this to work well with LVM volumes. So this is the solution I came up with. Finally, the port number is the port, the TCP port that QEMU uh, listens on for connections from the live backup client asking for blocks and, and whatnot. Again, this is, um, 
work in progress. There's no authentication for this TCP protocol. There's no authorization, nothing. At some point, it has to be encrypted, and I need to use certificates, potentially those that are owned by the user of the VM, uh, to actually protect it. Um, on the other hand, if libvirt comes along and is able to offer the same functionality in a way that live backup client can get a hold of the dirty bitmap, create the snapshot, get a hold of the dirty, bit, dirty blocks bitmap, and copy the dirty blocks over, then I'll get rid of this whole protocol and just use uh, libvirt. So on the client, I just invoke live backup client and give it a, a directory where I want the files to be recreated and the host name and port number. So there are some failure scenarios that I have considered. Um, what happens if QEMU crashes during normal operation of the VM? We just lost our dirty blocks bitmap in memory. And when it comes back up again, it's gonna say, I don't have a dirty blocks bitmap. I'm going to start every block is dirty. And the next time live backup client connects up and wants to do a backup, it'll be forced to do a full backup. That's the effect of that. QEMU crashes while live backup is in progress. Again, similar thing happens. Live backup client is forced to do a full backup next time it connects. Live backup client crashes while live backup is in progress. Um, this is indicated by the TCP connection going away. What does the server do? We can actually do something more intelligent in this case. We can take the live backup snapshots view of what blocks are dirty and or them with the new dirty blocks bitmap and consider that as the dirty blocks bitmap. So the next time live backup client is invoked, it connects, it will actually do a proper incremental backup. So, in all of these cases, I'd like to point out that the VM itself is not impacted. We try very hard to stay out of the VM's way when we do our backup. How do I test this? So the hypothesis is that live backup creates a uh, bit accurate image of all the virtual disks. And I should be able to run compare at the time the live backup snapshot was called the image that's in the original VM host and the image that's created on the backup host should be a bit for bit match. And how do I, um, so remember, once the snapshot create command is done, we allow the, 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 the uh, file to be written. So how do I save that view of the world? So I leveraged LVM snapshots in this. And what I do is I have a little snippet of code that I've commented out for most operation. For testing purposes, I turn it on. As soon as the create snapshot command is done, it, 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 it uh, does an LVM um, snapshot, compares, and yes, it's true. So I'm running out of time, so I'll open it up for questions at this point. 